Hi everybody, so I thought today, after my post on my profile page yesterday, um, I would do a, a live on my actual page, because a lot of people on my page aren't on my profile page, aren't on my profile page, and they wouldn't have a, a clue about this very important issue that's going on, and I, and I really thought I needed to share it today. Um, so yesterday, uh, well, as many of you may know already that I do a lot of work with addic addiction and mental health, and... I am an advocate for that and have spent much of my life being in the system, working in the system and also being in the system itself, you know, from a quite a young age of suffering from an eating disorder. And n not now, but, you know, it, it is, has always been part of my mission to actually support people who do suffer from mental health issues. And as from yesterday, um, after 20 years of, of being part of the, the yoga world, therapy, working with mental health, working with people with addiction, working with um, people with uh, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, suicidal tendencies, all that stuff. Let's take my glasses off, give them a clean. Um, I was told that my services weren't required anymore, um, all down to COVID and, and it not being um, viable to keep me on and, and to keep alternative therapists on. Um, which to me yes there's, there's grief behind it the grief comes from feeling for, for the people who do suffer from mental health and dis-ease in their mental state and that they don't have that support anymore and those supports are being taken away due to um, not being able to keep people like us on who have alternative skills and to me, it was something that I really wanted to talk about. I wanted to share with people yesterday on Facebook. I wanted to share the email that I received, obviously not giving any names. I also wanted to share what happened that, you know, now is the time for so many of us in so many ways to actually speak up about not only about mental health, whether we work in it or whether we suffer from it, but also to know that it's not a stigma, that it's something that is there it's not like a broken leg or a broken arm where you can actually see it but it's there and i've had so many discussions over the last 24 hours with wonderful wonderful supportive people um i've made it sort of my mission to actually really reach out beyond not just just you lot and that in my community that i solely do appreciate and truly love the fact that you're here listening to me rant on about it but also the fact that to me, although I have really no intention, even though I've done the work for so long, I have no intention of moving back into the system because it is heavy going and it and it and it is it's hard work to do it for a for a number of years. And I know that there's something else out there for me. But there is still people there who need the support of natural therapies and do need whether it be Reiki massage, healing, uh, yoga nidra, yoga, whatever it is that they need, that it does need to continue. And at, at this moment in time, these are the things that are being stopped and these are the things that are being suspended from our society, certainly in the UK. I don't know how it is in, in other countries and I'd be really happy to know. So what I would really love, and what I have done is I've actually reached out to some celebrities yesterday and it doesn't matter if they get back to me or not, it, I, don't, I don't care. Um, this, these are celebrities that I've been watching over the past three months who have been advocates for mental health and it's so easy for us now to actually reach out via social media, send a message when their message box is open because you can see it. Uh, who reads it? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But it's the intention that goes with it. It's like any manifestation. First of all, you start with the feeling of wanting to do something. It's my intention to reach out to that person for that person to hear what happened to me and how that affects mental health and to also thank them for the work that they've done over lockdown to make their own mental health issues you know, make them public, which a lot of them have done. Uh, I can name a few, but I won't. <laughs> and also to be advocates for that throughout this time of anxiety and tension and to support them. And I know a lot of you on this page do work in mental health, so you'll be able to hear me, which is why I do that, why I'm doing this live. Um, and um, it was funny this morning, I was talking to my sister about it because she works in massage therapy and also works with mental health and also has been a sufferer.
sufferer, sufferer of mental illness. And uh, it was funny because she, as soon as we were talking, she said, I never, I don't watch TV, but she, she shouted out, oh my God, I can't believe it. You know, here's another manifestation. Denise Walsh was on TV this morning, on um, This Morning with Lorraine, um, talking about her new book and about her mental illness and about her um, postnatal depression and how it started. And it was fabulous just to hear her because of her openness. And if you can get back in, if you're in the UK or not, if you can listen to Denise from this morning's um, programme and just hear what she had to say about mental illness, um, you can probably get it on ITV Hub. Just listen to what she says and she's so open. And that is the thing when, it, it to me, it's sad that um, it has to be celebrities that bring it out, but, but it obviously it takes a celebrity to actually say and an open celebrity to, celebrity to actually say look I've suffered from mental illness I've suffered from suicidal tendencies I've suffered from all all these things and I've written a book and I want you to hear me and I want you to hear that this is something that is common in our society today and we shouldn't be taking away natural therapies we should be keeping them in the system this is what's going to help and this is what's going to help heal and I do seriously believe that in a few years time if these natural therapies do stay away from the mental health systems that you know have just recently only has been brought in really seriously i mean i've been in the system for 20 years but i was very lucky to to actually get in quickly but over the last 10 years i've watched that grow where it's grown into massage it's touch therapy reiki even wow just who would have thought now being taken away you know and it's just not okay <laughs> it's really just not okay and although this community is small compared to others it, it's important to voice it and if you go on my profile page and, and all you want the wonderful messages that came from the, the the email that I sent yesterday um some of you have actually said um how can I speak out how can I support what can I do because I suffer from mental illness how can I do this well first of all you start by either you know replying to what I said or starting your own live just mentioning it yourself because you know this is social media and somebody will listen and somebody will hear you and it will be there you know that somebody will pick it up and the more people that speak out about either their mental illness or working in mental health um you know we build that community people hear us and and then it becomes a huge realization and it gets back to the big knobs and it in some see this is the way now to get back to the big knobs is to hear um for them to hear us and you know i know that prince william's doing a, a massive amount uh, regarding mental health at this moment in time if i had his telephone number i'd be ringing him now you know um i would love to contact him to find out you know to tell him what's happened and you know, I know he's done certain things where he's been actually on the end of the phone for people. Um, so in my situation, I've, I've seen a lot, you know, not only in the case of uh, heroin addiction from the beginning of my 20s and, and being in that space with addicts, but also, you know, suffering from my own mental illness and my own eating disorder and coming through full recovery through yoga. Did I recover from my, uh, from my um, eating disorder and it was talking therapy yes but mainly yoga that got me through my eating disorder and one marvellous teacher my first teacher who is actually on my profile page Marion Thomas who was oof, get emotional <laughs> was such a great um, support for me support for my teaching and knowing that how I've also, in, in, in my greatness as a, as a being, and I truly believe in myself and my ability, and that's the work I do with people, and that's what I've seen, that over the 20 years I've had some fabulous results. I've actually taken people from mental illness into yoga teacher training, and I've watched people become yoga teachers through addiction, acupuncturists, um, yoga teachers, massage therapists. I've watched people from a state of addiction move into natural health, 
so that they can not only help others, but they can also help themselves. And this, this is being taken away from people having the opportunity unless they find it themselves, which a lot of people with mental illness can't because money becomes an issue. You've got to pay for a yoga class. You've got to pay for a coach. You've got to pay for somebody who's going to help you unless you can get it free on the NHS, unless it's there, out there. And there's something I don't know. I know some people do give their services for free. But a lot of people who suffer from mental illness also have issues financially. So they can't reach out to a yoga class. They can't always get the, the yoga teacher they actually want. And I often say to the people where I worked, I, I have meditations on YouTube, on my YouTube Silent Moon Imaginarium. I have meditations on there. It's possible to reach out to me and I do do 30 minute consultations but free and I can talk to people. The big thing for me that I wanted to mention was the fact that the mental health services are so jam packed now and, and so tight that, you know, we don't have the hospitalisation like we used to have. The community support is weak, you know, because there isn't enough staffing. And, you know, over the last few years, I've seen people that could have been saved, hang themselves. I've seen them, you know, committing suicide. And, and I, you know, have this great idea that, you know, people like us, mental, that, that, that have worked with mental health, people like us who are in the natural healing world, um, now this, these times are becoming community times. We have the ability to support these workers if we work together. So these people who um, are like, you know, mental health workers who are out in the community, who can't always be with the people who are on thinking about topping themselves or, or you know, at that particular time, can always call on somebody who's on call to say, can you be here at this time to just speak and hold space for that person? Hello, my love. And just hold them physically or just spiritually in a place where that actually, and I, and I know because I've seen this happen, stops them from stepping over that bridge, stops them from taking a rope into the woods and hanging themselves. And I speak really curtly because it's true, this is, this is, the society that we've been living in and we are living in and it it's not something I want to look down on and go oh, we shouldn't be talking about this or or you know oh this is a miserable subject it's not for it to be a miserable subject it's it's here now for us to all as one as a community be able to do something about it and I know there's red tape and I know you can turn this off now and you can turn around and say well, what the hell is she talking about? But it takes a person to talk about it, to put it out there. This is how manifestation works, to say enough is enough. There's been enough suicides. There's enough people suffering from mental health without support. What is it that we can do about it? How can we, as a society, support the nurses? How can we, I know, <laughs> I know, David, how can we, you know, not even... I'm not asking even for, that it's payment is, you know, you know how the Samaritans work. You pick up the phone, you speak to somebody. Well, I think there's a way of this working. I really do see that whether I'm involved or not, that because there's no health, I don't know what it's like in the States, but certainly probably worse, but certainly in the UK, you know, that the, the mental health services, the hospitalization. I mean, I was in hospital when I was ill and I was lucky to have the hospital. Um, I didn't like it then, but, <laughs> but you know, it was there, it was support. It was, I was being held in some way that wasn't in the vulnerable place of my home where I was going to try and kill myself or I was going to try and, you know, um, you know, do the starvation thing or whatever. It was a, a place, it was a safe haven. Whereas now that's been taken away and, and even speaking to people who are in the system, the services in the community are, aren't there for them to reach out to. So the next step is, what do we do? What do we do as a community? Well, you know, there is ways and means of, of, of creating, you know, I know you've got to be CRB checked. I know all this stuff. There are ways of creating, going through the system where we can actually, you know, as people who are healers, there are plenty of people out there who are healers who can easily be CRB checked. 
who can hold space for people when nurses can't be there, that can be with that person who's thinking about topping themselves at that point in time, who's thinking about taking an overdose, can sit in the room with somebody, touch them, hold them, step back, just be there, be present and talk to them. And that can save a life. That, that to me, saved my life. And I know it can save other people's lives. Absolutely. I've, I've seen it, David, with one of my daughter's friends who did exactly that. You know, I've seen it with people our own age who have done it. And it, it's no different whether you're a young kid in your teens, 40 something and thinking about stepping off a bridge. Um, there's, a, there's a story that I'll share um, when I was I was a policewoman many, many years ago. I've done many things and often people don't believe that I was a policewoman, but I have a lot of experience in my life, life experience. And when I was in the police force and I was going through uh, my training, one of the things that they used to do in the 90s as police officers was to, um, you, I don't know how it is now, but we used to, um, you used to mirror a your your uh, mentor for a period of time, and then what would happen was you would step forward and your your mentor would get you doing the work. So you'd be making the arrests, you'd be doing the jobs, and and your mentor would be behind you. So it's that kind of shifting roles for you to get your you know get through your probation and actually get you get your stripes. <laughs> and I remember one of my jobs being. Um, one of my first jobs being in, and I was only in my early 20s, um, a suicide, and I had to go to a suicide. And we were um, we were in a, a marked car and we were driving and my mentor was saying to me, okay, this is one of my first jobs I had to deal with. You know, it was me and then the fire service. And what a situation to be in as a 20-something. And my mentor said to me in the car as he was driving, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> I can you imagine not only the adrenaline, but the feeling inside of me? And I just went like, how the hell do I answer that question? What am I going to do? Did I have, not have that much life experience? I mean, I'd had quite a bit. I'd travelled the world and I'd, 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 you know, I'd done all sorts of stuff, but not anything like I've got now. And we got to the scene and he put, the guy had put a hose pipe through the window. And obviously um, I couldn't see him because inside the car it was steamed up. You can imagine the scene on a cold kind of November day in the UK. It was it was dark <laughs> um, and rainy. And on the way, it was a lay by on the way up to Scotland on on a road on a road close to what we call the A1 in the UK. And I remember that the window had to be smashed. And I knew that when I, that window was smashed, that this, I was going to see something that I'd never seen before. And the window was smashed. And all I could see yeah, was this guy, and obviously his his head was to one side and he was dead, clearly. Um, what got to me more than anything was two things. That his flask of coffee was still hot and his watch was still ticking on his arm. Those were the first two things I saw. And to me, the flask of coffee being hot and the time said so much to me that how long it would have taken somebody just to hold that man, to speak to him, his coffee wasn't even cold. And I hope you see where I'm going with that. It's a little bit of analogy, analogy that it takes a split second of time to actually speak to somebody, to actually say, maybe this isn't the right day to do this, or just let me hold your hand, let me take you down off that bridge, because all you need is a hug. Um, and that's what I'm saying. And right now at this moment in time we're going through so much change so much shift that us as healers as mental health workers supporters as people who have suffered from mental illness and and hold space for people as coaches who suffer from mental illness and support through yoga through retreats and, and i'm proud of myself for somebody who's got through mental illness who who can actually live their life and support their family through running retreats for people who just want to change, want to shift their patterns, want to be held, want to have fun, want to see light in their lives, want to know that life is lightness and is joy and is about being connected to others. And 
it just takes, you know, finding your tribe, so to speak, and finding those people that you really can have out there to support you and that you're not alone. So that's partly why I'm doing this. Um, if you don't follow me on my profile page yesterday, as I said, I was, um, and if you've just joined, I was sort of deployed from the services my as a yoga teacher and that it wasn't needed anymore and I'm reaching out to say maybe I'm not going back into that I don't believe that I am I've got other things to do but it doesn't mean that that shouldn't stop there and other people shouldn't do it and those services should be should be available and what my grief now is is with the people that are suffering from mental illness and that what are they going into when they do go into hospital? That they're not getting the yoga, that they're not getting the touch therapy, that they're not getting the Reiki, that they're not getting the connection. What they're getting at these COVID times is nurses meeting them with masks on who can't touch them. And when you're mentally ill, you can't see that there's going to be change and shift in the next few weeks. You can't see that because all you're in is your bubble or you're in your place of you know, medication and, you know, those who suffer from mental illness. Depression is, as Denise Walsh said this morning, depression is somebody people can just go, hey, snap out of it. It's not that easy. It's like a fucking huge cloud that just drops on top of you and everything's black. And yes, there are people out there that can tell you how to deal with it. But it's not always easy for people to get themselves out of it. And I feel lucky enough that I have got the tools. Thank you. Um, I have got the tools to actually... I don't know if these comments are actually in my face. Well, they are to me. <laughs> I'll sit up. Um, I have got the tools to be able to do that for myself, is to be able to get myself out of it. That's what I give to others, is the tools to do that so when you're sat in anxiety how do you breathe yoga's about breathing nothing else and you know it's about using the tools yes you come to the class you do it but then you learn how to do it when you are you know using the tools when you are going through the anxiety attack when you are going through the panic attack she taught me the tools now i need to use them i remember doing them in the hospital in fact, I love them so much, I'm going to go away and I'm going to join a yoga class. I love them so much that I'm going to become a yoga teacher. I've seen it so many times, so many times. And that is being taken away from people. The ability to actually have the choice of whether they want to do that class today on a Wednesday morning or not. And that's the sad thing. And I just want to, you know, in my small world of, of of this space and my profile page in this space and that probably reaches about 5,000 people um I I just want to say you know well it doesn't reach that many but you know that's <laughs> I wish it would be wonderful if you could all share this if it feels that it resonates with you I'd be really grateful it's not this is not a plug for my business this is me saying you know please please do share it if it's important to you Yeah, I agree with you, David. <laughs> I am. Do you know what? It, it's funny because you say that and I think it's very true. And, and I, I've seen that more and more. Um, I have some beautiful people around me who are real and I can mention them. And I will, you know, Adele, Jan, Damien. Um, and then the people, of course, that I work with, um, Eleonora, Laura, uh, Karen, um, Rachel, you know, sorry if I've missed any of you, but these are the people that come to my mind that I have shared space with on here or, or do share space with regularly. And, you know, they're, those people to me are, are the genuine people who are willing to, to step up and step out for other people and really, you know, be, the, they're the warriors, they're, they're the people I see as warriors, pe warrior people, and those other people you mentioned there, um, I don't see them very often, and the reason why I don't see them very often is because I don't open my energy to them, one of my manifestations daily is, I'm so happy and grateful now that I connect with the people that resonate with me, uh, it's one of my 10 things that I write down every single day, I am so happy and grateful now that 
I attract the people that resonate with me. And by doing that, you will attract the people that are on your level. Right, okay. So just start with, I am so happy and grateful now. Don't give away your gift. You have, that's another thing. It, it's, you know, this is where the, this is where the, the balance can often shift because there's a big thing out there about, um, I know you work a lot, um, you do a lot of stuff with ego and stuff. And I, I also believe that there's a big thing out there that we shouldn't be charging, um, for the gifts that we have. And I do want to mention that because this is not true. We, we, we have to make a living. And if we choose to go into, you know, these so-called alternative medicine places, and I want to just shine a light on my friend Adele this morning, who said, these shouldn't be called alternative practices anymore, because these are a natural part of living. And she's so right. Alternative, it's more like the medicine is the alternative side of life, not the what is called alternative because all these alternative practices so to speak massage yoga reiki are all natural they're all natural to us as beings these are things that we i always say to people who i teach that that i that i speak to i'm really not your teacher i'm your reminder you know all this anyway i'm just here to remind you what you've forgotten and you've forgotten things along the way because you've been so conditioned. You've been so, um, you've been struggling. You've been finding life difficult. And what have you done as you've gone into worry and stress and anxiety and tension? You've lost your way. You've lost who you are. And that's okay. Let's bring you back. I'm just going to remind you of how to do that. And then one day, you know, even people in the hospital, wow. Oh God, I knew. And, and you know what? I did your class last this yesterday or last night, and you know what? I had the most craziest dream to do something, and then I followed it, and then I followed it, and then this is life because this is what happens when you remind yourself or get or you be, you you begin to remember who you are. Things begin to flow, and you start to see the flow, and then life becomes easy because you start to flow, and the stress goes, and you start to live in love and not fear, and it's just the most amazing way of living. That is this, because that that is just the only way to live that's the magic of life um it's beautiful and i always say you know we don't need drugs when we've got um um <laughs> thank you <laughs> we don't need drugs when we've got uh she's put me off that's laura messaging me uh easily distracted sort yourself out um you don't need drugs when you've got breath you don't need drugs when you've you've got yoga. You don't need drugs when you've got a natural way of living. And and I'm not going to say I don't do things. I drink red wine like the rest of you or the rest of them. I'm not going to say that I don't because I do. You know, I'm I'm real. You know, I love my wine. Um, in fact, sometimes t some days I like my wine too much. Um, but I'm very, very aware of myself and I'm very aware of who I am. And I've dabbled in things. I've done all sorts of stuff, which is and that's not to say, oh, you have when you work in, the, in this sort of industry that, you know, you have to have done stuff. You know, you don't. But that's been my journey and I have felt it. So I know it. So I come to, from a place of empathy with people. So I come from a place of understanding and knowing. Um, I don't know if there's other people writing comments and sometimes this happens, sometimes there are and I can't always see them all so I do apologise um, because what happens is when I put this away I will get back to you um, but right now, you know, um, as, a, as a bit of a plug and I will say it because I'm worthy of the plug and this is my, this is my business page is that, you know, I do work with people one-to-ones let's give you something free if you go on my homepage you've got 30 minutes free with me just invite yourself to a 30 minutes with me tell me what you need to do and what you want sorted and we'll sort it you know i i don't ask for anything off you i i can i give you always in your 30 minutes free i give you recommendations but you are not obliged to buy anything from me and that's straight up you know we don't i don't and you know you can go with any of those you you don't have to you know i i run my courses from the wild walk one weekend to 700 pound six sessions you know that are 
that are there with flower essences that I create for you. All that stuff is, is there for you. And if you feel that you want to change your life in any way, whether that be business, health, finance, love, everything is possible. Uh, you just have to know who you are and it's, we can get you there. I have no doubt and I know there is people that are on this page who will back me up and say exactly the same whether you choose to do a zoom yoga class right now or you choose to work with me on a one-to-one -one, if you choose to come 30 minutes free if you choose to come to a wild one weekend any way shape or form you will find or take a flower essence for example that there will be a shift and a change I have total faith in that and I know it because I've seen it and I know other people have seen it too so that's been really nice to actually just speak to you all and just say what I needed to say. Um, I share my profile page like I share my, um, like I share Silent Moon. I I don't really have a barrier between the two, you know. My profile page and my my business page are very much connected because I just am. <laughs> I don't feel like I have to be one way, one way or another way, the other way. You know, I don't feel like I have to be really any different on my business page than I am on my profile page. So I don't hide um, from anybody. That's just that's just me. So if somebody friend requests me and they're on here. Um, unless you're a total lunatic, um, I, <laughs> I, I don't often say no just because there's nothing different, really. Um, you'll just end up getting it twice, uh, which can only be positive for you in my eyes. So please do share this um, as a support for mental health. And I know that when we do put things out there and they get out into the universe, the universe hears it, and I know you do. And, you know little molecules, energy waves go out there. Ah, this is what she's asking for. And that may not come from me. It could be that I've put it out there, but somebody else will do it. And that's absolutely fine. It's called the bridge of incidents. And that's what many of you will know about, that when we put out a manifestation, no matter how big or small it is, the bridge of incidents is created for you to get to that space, no matter how long it takes. It could be tomorrow. It could be in four months time but there is a bridge of incidents created for people to move into places and situations for you to get where you need to be and it always happens it never fails all you have to do is believe and feel and it will be created for you so that's mine today and I love you loads thank you so much for tuning in to me wherever you are and I'll speak to you very soon Oh, yoga play as well. Let's leave a note on that. <laughs> Let's leave on that note. Yoga play workshop. That will be fun. 8th of November here in the UK. 10 till 4. Lots of love.